Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Yes, I couldn't help myself because yesterday I could see on, on Twitter we had Gal Gadot, also uh, known as Wonder Woman from the Justice League. She was trending. We had Rihanna. She was also trending and they released certain posts to do with the Israel-Palestine issue and we're going to discuss why people were so offended and disgusted by their tweets because to an average observer when you look at their tweets you think no they're, they're, they're sitting on a fence they're, they're somewhat balanced. Well Rihanna was anyway but what's, what seems to be the issue? That's the issue. That is the absolute issue. You cannot be balanced when you see an adult fighting with a child. I'm sorry, you cannot be balanced in that situation. <laughs> All right, let's jump straight into this. Let's see Gal Gadot and her post. This is a vicious cycle that has been going on for far too long. You got that right. Israel deserves. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry there, when an adult has abused a child, you don't start with the adult and their rights. What on earth is going on? Yeah, she is now a Hollywood actress. Before she was uh, in the army uh, of Israel and people make this excuse that look if when you're in Israel you have to be part of the army. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, if you have to, that's fair enough. But then afterwards, when you've moved from 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 there, what about now? You can think for yourself. Yeah, you've you're now mixing with other people. Your your mind is now more broader, and this is the garbage you're coming up with. Uh, Israel deserves to live as a free and safe nation. So she's clearly made her position quite clear. Uh, our neighbors, neighbors, she can't even call them Palestinians. Yeah, she can't even call them by their name. What a disgusting individual, frankly. When it comes to the Vatican. The Center for Christendom, it's located within Italy but it doesn't follow the rules and regulations of, of Italy, it's pretty much his uh, own country. If Italy went in with its military personnel and started doing what you and I saw was happening in Masjid Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem, the third holiest site to Muslims during the holiest month of Ramadan and on one of the possible nights of the night of power again virtuous to Muslims. Absolutely, I'm sorry, this is the line. Yeah, the line has been crossed. You cannot sit on the fence anymore. And this woman right here, she's not sitting on the fence either. Yeah, she's clearly made her allegiances uh, quite clear. I pray you can keep your prayers to yourself. You selfish woman. Some people they are beautiful on the outside but inside they are rotten. They harbor a dark heart and this, this individual is, is very representative of that. You can see on the outside, yes Wonder Woman, <laughs> Justice League. Very good but inside, what a dark heart you have. I pray for the unimaginable hostility to end. I pray for our leaders to find, find the solution so we can live side by side in peace. Side by side in peace. Uh, we have been living side by side in peace but it wasn't enough. In fact our rulers Salahuddin whose physician Sheikh Jarrah is what the place is named after. The Muslim liberator who actually called back the Jewish community because they were exiled by the Crusaders. Let's move on to Rihanna. My heart is breaking with the violence I'm seeing displayed between Israel and Palestine. Yeah I mean even your choice of words. Yeah, I'm sorry but violence is taking place in Palestine. It should be coming first but you might think I'm, I'm nitpicking, no problem. I can't bear to see it. Innocent Israeli, uh, okay, Israeli uh, and Palestinian children, it, you know it goes to show this, it says a lot about the psychology of a person. Even the way you order your sentences because these individuals sit there for a long period of time, you know, making sure that before a post like this goes out, they're 100% okay with it. Innocent Israeli and Palestinian children are hiding in bomb shelters. Now, if you've been following the news, there are no bomb shelters for Palestinians. Let's, let's get this straight. We don't have that luxury. So when you're saying bomb shelters, you're only talking about is Israelis. Thousands of Israelis spent last night in bomb shelters. Thousands of Israelis, Israelis, Israelis. Yeah, they're the only ones that can afford luxuries like this. We can't. Over 40 lives lost in Gaza alone. Okay, okay. 
uh, and at least 13 of whom were also innocent, innocent children. There needs to be some kind of resolve. We are sadly watching innocent people fall victim to notions perpetuated by government and extremists and this cycle needs to be broken. Well it's not going to be broken with messages like that frankly. Yeah, People sitting on the fence. You cannot sit on the fence. Yeah, and you might think, oh, this is a very complicated issue, but you need to check my previous post. It's not a complicated issue. Anybody with any knowledge of what Gaza is, Gaza is pretty much an open air prison camp. Yet Israel does not have any jurisdiction over it, yet there is a blockade. Blockages of medicine, food, water. You know, it's, it's really despicable. Despicable. If that was on our front pages, I swear by Allah, there would be a global uprising against Israel. But the media hides this stuff so well that Israel gets away with daylight murder. This is all over, all over social media. And the Arab states and the Muslim nations, all they can do is just send, send tweets. Why? Because you need to search up the Camp David Accords yeah, and the uh, Abraham uh, Accords as well. Yes, all this means is it's an accord, it's an agreement with an Arab country that you, you know, don't interfere there and we'll give you aid every year. Yeah, Egypt uh, of course is a recipient of that and you saw the Arab nations that thought that could control Israel but you have rather enabled Israel and made it worse. But Let's see what the, according to the UN, this is very important. Yeah, this is a reason why you cannot, you cannot be on the fence because this is not a fence matter. Biden. Israel has a right to defend itself when you have thousands of rockets flying into your territory. Sajid Javed, all these, uh, you can't even call them human beings, frankly. Yeah, you can just call them froth. Yeah, they're like froth on the sea. You, you can't dignify them with, with the sea. And uh, our leaders also, the Muslim leaders, they also like the froth as well. Let's not get it twisted. And also, the, before, <laughs> before I go and look, if you are somebody, yeah, if, for example, if you are Pakistani and you cannot speak out against the atrocities happening in East Turkestan, you are also part of the problem. Yeah, if you are Arab and you could not speak out against the atrocities in India against the Muslims, you are also part of the problem. Yeah, if you are Saudi Arabia, uh, an Arab citizen and you cannot speak out against the atrocities in Yemen, you are part of the problem. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Look, if you are selective with your activism, then you are nationalistic. Yeah, or you are looking at some benefit for yourself. I'm sorry, the first identity that we have is that we are Muslim. Yeah, first and foremost. According to the UN, the occupying power has no legal authority to impose Israeli law in these occupied territories. Yeah, you cannot apply your generic law and say, yes, we've gone to our courts and we've decided no one gives a toss, mate. The international community does not accept that in the slightest. Rupert Colville in 2021, yeah, latest quote, he's a UN spokesman for refugees. He says that international law applies there, not Israeli law. What the hell is Israeli law? UNESCO says in point five of his 2017 ruling that the occupying forces legislation is null and void. It's null and void. It doesn't work there. Human Rights Watch says in June 4th, 2017, it also referred to Israel as an occupying power. Amnesty International says it violates international law and amounts to a war crime and the list goes on. Yeah, so this is to say that look, it's not something that we are cheesed off over. It is something that's recognized in the inter international community. Yeah, so you cannot sit on the fence because Palestine does not receive up to four billion pound in US aid every single year. Palestine is not the one that has an army. Listen to me closely, Palestine does not have an army. But when you look at Israel, they are ranked 15th in terms of military expenditure. That's according to a 2019 statistic, $20 billion they spend on their military. And they have active army members of 170,000 versus 30 to 50,000 of Palestinians. Yeah, they don't even have an army. It's ridiculous. Palestine is not the one that has a political interest in this. Benjamin Netanyahu was in political turmoil a couple of weeks before and now he's going to use this to his benefit. Yeah. It, it bodes well for him that this is happening. Yeah, and why we, we're talking about Hamas terrorists, ISIS terrorists, why is no one talking about the Kahanists? 
Yeah, the Kahanists, you probably are thinking, yeah, this, this mug's making that up. He's just making words up. Kahanists, they are an extremist right-wing Zionist group that are like this with Benjamin Netanyahu. And there was also a fringe group that wanted the third temple. Yeah, back in the days they were ignored, but now they are in the in the member of parliament or senate or whatever you want to call it of Israel and now they have influence even over Jerusalem. That's right. So what they want to do is they want to knock down Masjid Al-Aqsa and put their third temple called the Temple of Solomon. Yeah, so uh, I'm sorry, Palestine is not the one violating international law and being condemned by the UN and the likes. When it comes to other activism things of LGBT and this and that, they're like, whoa, Muslims, have you no shame? Have you not this? Why aren't you speaking against it? Why are your people not condemning it? Well, come on. Why is Boris? Why is Biden? Yeah. Why are these individuals not condemning it? Just because we know that there is a double standard. Let's leave it there, guys. Until next time. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum.